Welcome to our webinar this evening on Southwest Minnesota Arts Council's Art Study Opportunity for Youth Grants for fiscal year 2024, which for us runs from July 1st of 2023 through June 30th of 2024. I am Carolyn Kaska. I'm the Grants Administrator for Southwest Minnesota Arts Council. Um, and I'll start out and just uh, run through a little bit what we're going to talk about tonight. We'll talk just briefly about Southwest Minnesota Arts Council. We'll look at the guidelines for this grant program. We will go over to our website and look at what resources are available for you over there. Then we'll head into our grant system and we'll walk through all of the application questions and we'll finish up talking about the grant process or what happens after you submit your application. Um, at the end, if we've got a little more time and you have specific projects in mind that you want to talk about, we can do that then. Um, and we are going to stop a couple times for questions as we are talking tonight. Um, and if you would otherwise keep yourselves muted, that would be great. Um, and as we get to those questions, feel free to type something into the chat as you think of, of it. Um, even if we haven't made it to the uh, stopping point for questions yet, um, or once we do pause, you can unmute yourself and ask your question. So moving ahead, Southwest Minnesota Arts Council, or SMOC, is a nonprofit organization committed to promoting and encouraging the development of the arts in the 18 counties of Southwest Minnesota by serving as a source of funds and technical services which enable local organizations, educational institutions, and individuals to sponsor, create, and promote the arts in their communities. So here is our region down in the Southwest corner of the state. We are one of 11 regional arts councils that cover the whole state of Minnesota and work to get state arts dollars out into all those corners. Uh, so unsurprisingly, most of our funding comes from the state of Minnesota. We have an allocation from their general fund, but most of it comes from the Arts and Cultural Heritage or Legacy Fund. We also receive some funding from the McKnight Foundation, which we use for some of our grants for artists and also from memberships and donations from around our region. And to be a little more specific about what that region is, it includes 18 counties, which are Big Stone, Chippewa, Cottonwood, Jackson, Candy, Ojai, Lacroparl, Lincoln, Lyon, McLeod, Meeker, Murray, Nobles, Pipestone, Redwood, Renville, Rock, Swift, and Yellow Medicine, and two tribal nations, Pijutazizi, Upper Sioux Community, and Chanchayapi, Lower Sioux Community. And we acknowledge that this Southwest Minnesota region occupies the traditional ancestral and contemporary lands of the Dakota people. So these Art Study Opportunity for Youth grants are open to students who will be entering grades 5 through 12 in fall of 2024, so next fall. Um, they need to reside in our Southwest Minnesota region for at least six months before applying and then stay a resident in our region as well throughout their grant period. We have a lot of arts disciplines that you could do with this. We do want students to have some experience in their art form um, and some of those art forms could include visual arts, which would be things like painting, ceramics, photography, uh, writing, media arts, cultural arts, dance, music, and theater. And there could be something else that you do that might also work. So what can you use this grant for? You can do a one-on-one -on -one study with a professional artist in your area. You can attend some sort of arts workshop, camp, or series of classes. Or if you qualify for the federal free or reduced lunch program, you can also apply to cover your just regular weekly lessons like uh, piano lessons or voice lessons. And the grant is available for up to $500. And uh, there are a few things that are not eligible for these grants. Projects that don't have an art focus, participating in a school or other organization band or choir trip, 
equipment or supplies that are not specifically for the project that you're doing as part of this grant, uh, credits or materials necessary to fulfill degree requirements. So if this project would be going towards something um, that you would get a school grade for. Also not eligible, uh, religious socialization of the participants or audience, attempts to influence any state or federal legislation, payments of debts that are incurred before the grant begins, or if you have a past grant project still in progress with us or an overdue final report. Um, one eligibility thing to note in the past, uh, we everyone was limited to activities within the state of Minnesota because we were using state funds for this. Um, now we've got some other funds available thanks to some donors from around our region. So um, now out of state travel and activities are eligible. As far as the timeline for this, the deadline is March 27th uh, for projects that will start May 1st or later. And just a note that you'll need to submit by 4.30 p.m. on that deadline date. The system will not allow you to submit after that time. You'll need to choose some dates for your project. You'll need a start date. And in choosing that, um, remind yourself of that earliest allowed start date, which was May 1. Um, and just know that you can't start any activities toward your project before that start date. Uh, so that means you can't uh, buy any supplies, you can't register for the opportunity that you're wanting to take part in. Um, so basically no spending of any money before that start date. Uh, if you would need to, if things time out such that you'd need to actually register and put down some sort of deposit toward your opportunity that you're doing before that start date, then you could not include that amount in your grant request. Um, but overall, just remember that your start date should not be the first date of your camp or your class because you'll need that time beforehand to um, organize and purchase anything you might need. You'll also need an end date for your project. Uh, make sure to give yourself time to both complete and maybe get some feedback on your project. Uh, and everything awarded this year needs to be finished up by June 30th of 2025. So you'll have a little bit more than a year if you need uh, to complete your project. Um, we'll pause now for some questions now that we've gone through the basic guidelines for the program. Feel free to unmute or type something into the chat. Carolyn? Yes. Um, and so this grant is for individuals, correct? Correct, yes. This is for individual students. So the student themselves would be the applicant. So this young man that I know of, uh, would Mark and I help him write the grant or does he have to write it for himself? Um, students can certainly get help in writing the grant, but it would need to be from his perspective. So it would need to be say, I plan to do this. Okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. Sounds like uh, no other questions at the moment. So we're going to keep moving along and we're going to head over to our website and look at what's all available over there. Um, so everything you need is going to be under this grants tab um, right away. There's the login to the grant system, which we'll go to in a second. Uh, but we're going to find our art study page here. And you can find that either under individual artists or schools and youth. So here are art study grants. And there's a lot of helpful things on the page. First of all, most important are the guidelines. So we talked a little bit about some of the guidelines earlier, but please make sure um, you'll wanna read through all of this just to make sure you're not missing anything. Then we've got all of our important dates here. Um, when you come back probably sometime next week, instead of this registration, we'll have a video from tonight that you can watch if you need to revisit anything. 
Um, and then down at the bottom here, we've got some materials for you. Um, if you want to work in a Word document first before pasting things into the system, we've got the application questions here in a Word document and just some other um, helpful attachments, including if you want to look ahead already at what final report questions might be, you can take a look at those as well. Also under grants, if you go under grants help and look at this workshops assist and assistance page, um, this really has all of the ways that you can get some help with your application. We have open office hours every month where you can just drop in. We've got some in-person and virtual sessions. Most of those have finished up for the year, but we have one more of those remaining on March 7th. You can um, schedule some time with me uh, by following this button here. You can just pick a time on my calendar, whether you'd like to meet by phone or Zoom or in person. Um, and this is a place to come back and look for other grant workshops. As you see, again, we've pretty much reached the end for our year. Um, and here are videos for past grant workshops from this year. So um, again, next week when you come back here, instead of this previous year, our study opportunity for youth will have the, the new one from today. So we're gonna head over to our grant system. Um, if you already had an account in the system, you would just log in and we do, um, it does make things easier if the student themselves is able to create an account and that's fine if they use a um, parent email address. Um, so to create an account, new account, you would click here. If you're not sure whether you already have an account in the system or not, you can check with us and we'll get that figured out for you. But I'm going to log in here. This doesn't really apply to students, but if you've been a panelist for us, it brings you to that dashboard first. So make sure you're moving over to your applicant dashboard. And um, this is where you'll come in when you log into the system, your dashboard, uh, except for the very first time you come in, it'll take you right to this apply page. And that's where we're gonna go. Uh, so this has all of our grant programs that are currently open. And you'll want to scroll through and find here's our art study opportunity for youth. If you'd like to just preview the application without actually starting anything, you can click this button. Otherwise, um, you can click the apply button and that'll start an application for you. So that's what we're going to do. And I'll just point out a couple more buttons here at the top. If you need to work in another language, there is a Google Translate embedded into the site. So if you choose a different language that you want to work in, uh, you can do that and it'll translate um, the interface and all of the questions for you. Um, there is a copy previous answers button, which if you've done an application in the system before, you can choose to copy from a previous application. And I don't know why it's not showing up right now, but there usually is another button here that is a collaborate button, which allows you to invite someone else to work on the application with you. Um, you would just put in their email address um, and you can choose from several levels of permission if you want them to just um, read or giving them edit permission or giving them uh, permission to submit. Um, and then that person will just need to the, receive an email and they'll just need to create a password to come in and work on the application with you. So this can be really helpful if your artist is providing some information and they could come in here and put it right in. I need to investigate why that button is not there right now. Um, I think they recently did some, maybe changed some settings and that might be something I need to turn back on. But you should be able to do that. So starting our application, again, it's got some reminders if you need some help. You'll need a name for your project. And as you see by these examples, it doesn't have to be anything exciting, just really basically saying what it is you're gonna do. You will fill in how much you're going to request. 
but you'll probably want to wait until after you filled out your budget form to fill in this amount. Um, and we've got just some links to some of those helpful documents again here and some tips as you're working on your application. You can share your pronouns if you'd like, enter the grade that you will be going into in next fall, and then you'll start out describing what it is you would like to do. So what is the camp that you're going to, who is the artist that you're studying with, depending on what you're doing, um, when will it happen, where will it happen, who's all involved, um, lots of details here is helpful. Um, then this next section, as far as some additional information to provide is based on the type of opportunity that you're wanting to do. So if you are going to be just doing kind of a one on one study with an artist, um, you will need to describe them here and then upload their resume here. Again, that's something they could come in and do. Um, there's also a place where you could put their website. Um, and then if you're doing more of like a workshop or a class or a camp, even with multiple instructors, um, again, you would describe that here. You could attach um, a resume if that was appropriate or a brochure. Um, and again, maybe the camp website, all kinds of uh, information there and describing everything that you're attaching. Um, one more section here for if you are doing a one on one study with an artist, you're asked to provide some samples of their work just so we get an idea of um, the level of artists that you're working with, so they can um, upload things here or link to something they maybe have posted online. They also need to provide a letter of commitment saying, yes, I do agree that I'm going to be working with this student. So again, you should be able to have um, that artist come in here and um, using that collaboration button and um, enter that information for you. And then here's where you put those start and end dates that we talked about. Again, the reminder, the start date, earliest start date for this uh, deadline is May 1st. Then you will uh, put together a budget. Uh, you can use this Excel form that we have here or uh, put together something else. Uh, but we're going to just take a look at that Excel form because it does some nice adding up for you. All right, so you can enter either your name or maybe describe the opportunity that you're going to do up in this title area. And then you just can start entering in um costs that you might have and we'll throw some amounts in here and you'll see it's adding up for you um, and then down here it'll help you figure out for sure how much you can request so it tells you your request cannot exceed 350 dollars or the maximum request amount for this grant program whichever is less so our art study opportunity for youth is 500. So our 350 is less than 500. So that's how much we can request. Um, let's just say that our opportunity is a little more expensive. Now it tells us we can't exceed 600 or the max of 500, whichever is less. So this time 500 is less. Um, that leaves us with $100, so there's a space down here to talk about um, where is that extra $100 coming from. So you'd fill out this form and then upload it here. And if there's anything else you want to explain about your budget, there's some space there if you need. Then you'll be talking about your own art. So what have you done in the past in this art form? Um, how long have you been working in this art form? And then it asks you to talk about some challenging things that you may have done with your art during that time. Then you can share some of your own work. We've got some fields where you can upload things like um, images or writing samples um, and also some links that you can do if you have, for instance, some videos on YouTube. 
then we want you to think about how the project will um, help with your growth as a student artist. So we ask you to think a little bit about what are some of your stronger or weaker areas, um, things that are um, you're really good at, things that might need a little work, um, and how this experience might um, sort of help with some of those weaknesses, for instance, uh, what might you learn from this opportunity that you're not learning in maybe some regular lessons that you're already doing. Um, but most importantly, what specific changes might you look for for yourself through this opportunity? Um, it could be a change in your skills, it could be change in knowledge, it could be a change in your attitude or behavior. Um, so just think about what changes are you hoping for as a result of this opportunity. Then you need to think about um, how you could prove whether those changes have taken place. And there are some examples here for you um, with some different types of projects. And these are all from um, some previous applicants. So here's somebody who does painting. They want to complete at least three paintings to show at a student art exhibit and to learn how to put together a portfolio. Um, and for their measuring, they are going to have their mentor critique their uh, three new watercolors that they did, um, get feedback from people at the exhibit. Um, and have a plan in place for their portfolio. And there are examples for a music one, a dance one. Um, so this should hopefully give you a little bit of an idea, um, mostly if it's just a way that you can get some sort of feedback showing a change from before the opportunity to after the opportunity. Then finally, it asks you um, to think about in doing this uh, study experience, you're gonna to have to be spending a lot more time on your art form and just talk about your commitment to that. Then we just finish up with a little bit of um, demographics, um, some audience numbers. Uh, these are nothing to really lose a lot of sleep over um, if you are working with or going to a camp and there's three instructors, then you've got three artists. You may not have any audience um, for children benefiting. You need one for yourself. So this can be very basic. Um, and then we just ask if you've participated in any of our opportunities for assistance. And the very last thing is um, signatures and there's a spot for uh, parent if the student is under 18. So as you are working, this will all be auto saving for you, but you can click this save application button or submit when you're ready. But the save button um, will give you a list of all of the required questions that you still need to answer. So that can kind of help you track your progress. Um, so you could continue here to go back and keep working, but we're gonna head back to our dashboard and you'll see now here's this application that we just started. And to go back in and keep editing, you can um, click that edit link here. Um, if you're awarded a grant, your contract and your final report will be available here as well. We're gonna jump back over to our slides and stop again if there are any questions. Not hearing anything or seeing anything in the chat, we will keep moving along. Um, so just some tips as you're working on your application. It's always good to start working early, um, especially when you're uh, organizing some of these activities with other people and may need to get information from them. Uh, make sure that you read the guidelines uh, and the criteria carefully, just so you know um, what is all involved and eligible. Um, also, you will have seen in the application that a lot of the questions have multiple parts to them, so make sure that you are getting all of those answered. Um, it is fine to just use everyday language for this. We don't need real 
uh, wordy long answers, just as long as you are feel like you're fully answering the question, that is plenty. It's also good to assume that the people reviewing your grant don't know anything about you or your project. Um, maybe there's a particular music camp that a lot of students from your school go to year after year. Um, pretend that the people reading about this have never heard of it. Just make sure all of that information is there. And finally, uh, don't hesitate to contact us. We are here to help you and there's lots of ways to get assistance. Uh, you can always talk through your project with us before you're getting started just to make sure is this actually under the right grant program? Um, is this eligible? Uh, we can always answer any questions you may have as you're filling out the application. And we also can review a draft of your application for you before you submit it. If you let us know um, about a couple weeks before the deadline that you have a draft ready, we can go in and look through it, let you know if you're missing anything, if maybe one of your work sample links doesn't work, um, if there's something that might sound a little confusing um, and just give you some feedback before you actually apply. So if you have time to start early and do that, it can um, really be helpful to take advantage of that draft review. So what happens after you submit your application? The first thing is that we as staff will give um, your application a read through to review it for eligibility and completeness. So again, at that stage, if we find something missing or an eligibility concern, uh, you'll have 48 hours to fix whatever that is. Um, and then at that stage, that is the kind of last contact that staff has with your application. We don't determine uh, who gets funded or not. We're just kind of here to facilitate the process. So at that point, the applications go on to a panel of individuals from around our region who will discuss and score the applications based on the criteria for this program, which we'll look at in a second. And then uh, their scores go on to our board of directors who make the final funding decisions. So the criteria for this grant program, they are looking at um, the artwork that you're currently doing, um, the experience that you have in that art form, and that is worth 50% of your score. And then they are looking at um, how well will this project contribute to your growth in your art form, and that is also worth 50% of your score. And if you um, go into some of those documents on the website, this is also in the guidelines, it'll go into a little more detail um, of what they're looking for for each of these criteria. Also, um, after the panel has done their scoring, you may be awarded some additional percentage points if you meet some of these following priority criteria for us. If you are a first time applicant to us, if you are from the BIPOC or LGBTQ communities or a person with disabilities, um, or if you are from a county that has not been receiving as much funding from us lately, um, you will get one percentage point added to your score for each of these areas that you meet. So if your grant is awarded, you'll have to sign a contract with us. And then once we um, have that contract, we will pay out your grant to you. Um, and with these student projects, you'll probably not need to worry about this acknowledgement. Um, this would be if you're doing any sort of um, public facing performance or exhibit that you're organizing on your own, you would need to um, use some uh, credit line from the grant and a logo. Um, but with the kinds of activities that you're going to be participating in, you will probably not need to worry about this. We realize that as people are doing projects, things can change, things can go wrong. Um, don't be afraid of that contact us. We may be able to help with things like extending your project end date. Maybe we can approve some changes to your budget if something you were going to purchase or go to is no longer available. We can help you come up with something uh, that's kind of in the spirit of this 
original request. Um, so don't worry if things start going not as planned, just remember to contact us and we can help you figure things out. Finally, you'll need to do a report. At the end of your project, you'll have 60 days after your project end date to do that report. Um, and it helps if, as you're just getting started on your project, you check what kinds of information you might need to be gathering. Uh, mostly, this will be about um, those changes that you are hoping will take place for you during the project. So that is all I have for information tonight. Um, so if there are, again, any questions or specific projects that people would like to talk about, feel free to unmute or type in the chat again. Well, again, I'm not hearing anything or seeing anything come through the chat, uh, but please feel free to contact me if you have any questions. I'm happy to answer any questions that you may have going forward. I will also note that we do have some changes coming for our new year for this, which starts on um, July 1. Uh, we're hoping to have some more, more frequent deadlines instead of just the one per year, and also looking at further simplifying the application. So you can look for those in the future. Well, thanks for joining us, everybody, and hope you all have a good evening.